everybody. So Chris and I are sitting here going on? waiting to um, board our flight to Miami and then we're going to fly all the way back home to see our girls um, in Denver. So we're super excited. It's been a wonderful, wonderful, amazing experience this week. Um, Lavelle definitely outdid themselves. Um, literally this place has been paradise. We've had amazing days, spent the days at the beach, at the pool, um, at Sanoa Island, um, we went to the spa, where else we do? All the different lounges at night, all the different food. Hi Sharon! Um, the amazing, amazing food. I mean seriously, I think I gained 10 pounds while I was here. Um, <laughs> hey Kevin! Um, but it's been super amazing. Um, we took it all in. We had a blast. We had a wonderful cocktail party on Friday night with Lavelle. Um, super inspiring. Um, I can't say how great this trip has been. This trip is definitely by far one of my favorite trips ever. Um, and I got to spend it with my husband. That's the best part. We earned this trip. Um, all inclusive. I mean, you can't beat that, you guys. That's, everything's paid for. Your drinks, your food, everything. Um, by Lavelle. So it's been super amazing. Um, we probably had, a, you know, 15 hours of sleep the whole week. <laughs> it's been fun. We got to mingle with our families and all our friends that we've created through Lavelle. It's been awesome to also see people that have been following me and were able to pull me out of a crowd and say, hey, are you Shanann? And that's been so, so awesome. Like, so awesome that, um, I've been able to inspire people like that. So we are grateful, um, extremely humble um, and blessed. Oops. Um, yes, Sharon, they were. Um, it was like an all day, well, it was like a three hour total massage. So um, we did an hour before where we sat in the jacuzzi, steam room, sauna, ice bath which was super relaxing for your body and then they had this rainforest shower and then you had an hour massage and then you got to do that again. Um, so it's really nice because you got to relax beforehand and then get the massage and then relax afterwards. So it was all inclusive. Like the trip was absolutely amazing. We wanted to go play mini golf but we never just, we just didn't find the time. We were too busy eating and living on the beach. As you can see there's so much sun. Um, look at this. We got fried yesterday. Yeah. Chris's shoulders are like fried. <laughs> Hi Shelly. So um, we've been blessed. It's been a truly amazing week. Um, our family's been taking care of our kids. Um, we can't wait to get home to see them. I really want to take them back here. It's been truly amazing. Um, and our girls have never been to the beach. So we got to spend the whole week on the beach and enjoy ourselves. And um, I don't know, we're blessed and excited. And we're so excited about Toronto. We're going to Toronto in June. Don't know the exact dates yet, but we will be there. Um, it's so funny because I just put um, Canada on my vision board. So Canada's on there, Europe's on there. So we still have plenty of more places to go. And so Toronto, it is in June. Chris and I, um, hopefully Chris can go. <laughs> um, but I will definitely be there. Um, and it's going to be awesome. So, so excited. You guys have an amazing day. We land in Miami at 4.30 Eastern. So maybe I can catch up with my bestie, um, Marjudy, while we're there. So um, maybe she can sneak in, but she's going to be too busy watching the Patriot game. Hopefully the Falcons win. <laughs> so, um, oh, and we got some amazing chocolates and vanilla and um, coffee. mother-in-law coffee. Um, they said it's absolutely the best. Haven't tried the coffee here, but they said it was good, so we'll see. You guys like my hat? I love the hat. <laughs> So, all right, guys, you guys have a great day. If you are ready to um, promote and thrive and really help people change lives and then be rewarded for it, um, private message me. Let's talk. Um, I'd love to help you. I'd love to share this experience with you. It's been truly life-changing as far as being able to help people to um, change my life, my husband's life, my family's lives, and give ourselves our life back. And then on top of that, to be able to be rewarded like this and spoiled by the company, um, it's truly amazing and absolutely wonderful. Hi, Debbie. 
So you guys have a wonderful day and um, we'll talk to you guys when we hit Miami. Bye. See my hat? I love it. You can see the back. <laughs> Sorry, I'm obsessed with my hat. Um, hey Amanda, I'm so excited about your team. It's rocking. You have um, such an inspiration and a fire in you um, to help people change lives. It's true. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to play you two interviews with David Cologne. It's one of Chris's friends that he met in Colorado. So the first interview I play for you is going to be with David Cologne and CBI. There's a few CBI agents that interview him and it's in person and it's on August 15th, 2018. So just a couple days after the murder. And then I'm going to play you the phone interview, which happens after, sometime after Detective Baumhofer calls him back and asks him about the letter that he had written Chris. And a lot of you guys have seen my video I did where I read the letter that he wrote Chris in prison. I read it on a video. So yeah, I'll link that video in the description so you guys could see it. So that w that's why Detective Baumhofer calls him back to ask him about the letter. Okay, so here it is. I'm done. Yeah, oh, not too bad. How about yourself? Not too bad. Yeah, I've heard things going on in the jail today. Very chaotic as usual. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody always doing something. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I just didn't know where else to put them. Yeah, whatever. Why don't you catch me as my office? Okay. Use the division chief. Oh, thank you. Uh -huh. I have a, I have walking in. Appreciate that. In there. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, sir. Absolutely. <clears throat> yeah, there you go. Best part of the day. We're not going to sit in that chair. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my cards, you know who I am. So, obviously we spoke on the phone. Um, right. My name's Kellen Hassensab. I'm with the Colorado Bureau of Investigation, and we're okay. uh, assisting the Frederick Police Department on that missing persons case that they're working on right now. And, um, your name came up with somebody that we should talk to that might have some information just about the general situation, so that's why we're here, you know, Understood. name on a list. So if you could kind of explain to us how you're involved in this and what you might know about the situation, that would be a good good place to start. But how I'm involved, I guess I'm just friends with them. Okay. Um, met them like seven years ago when they moved up from North Carolina. Okay. I had my own business at the time. Um, I do what's called reconditioning cars. Okay. Um, not here, but it's like dents and paint and window tint and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Anyway, so I worked at the dealership, not for the dealership, my own business that they worked at. Okay. So that's how we met. Okay. So we've been pretty good friends. And then, of course, I bought a house and they said, where do you live? So they bought a house. In the same neighborhood. Oh, okay. I, I'm really right around the corner, like two minutes away. Okay. Um, so that, that's kind of how I know them. Uh -huh. um, as far as knowing anything about what's going on, you know, not much. I mean, honestly, it's uh, just you know what I what Chris has told me. Okay. Um, I talked to him a few times. I went to see him that night. I was actually I'm off on Mondays. Um, I was actually home. I was actually painting something at that, that same time. That I guess. Nicole came over around noon, I think I, what the news okay. said. So, we're well, well, tell us what you remember about Monday, a big good place to start. So, uh, The only thing Monday that I, by that was is later at night, I got a text from a, a buddy of mine named Jeremy, uh -huh. and Jeremy said, hey, what's going on with Chris and Shanann? Uh -huh. So I have no idea. What okay. I mean. He says, well, it's all over Facebook. I said, well, I don't, I don't have yeah. her on Facebook, blah, blah, blah. I said, okay. So anyway, um, he says, yeah, she's missing. And I, I was kind of like, oh, whatever, yeah. Yeah. And I just kind of like didn't believe that. And so I text Chris. He didn't reply right away, so I called him. Uh -huh. And then he answered. And, and then that's when he said, he goes, yeah, he goes, he goes, you know, I went to work. And like, someone came over and came home. And 
they've been gone ever since, and all her stuff, all her personal stuff is here, everything, phone, keys, mm-hmm. everything. I was like, oh, wow, dude. So I walked over to his house just to talk to him about everything, yeah. and that's it. That's Monday. Okay. What time did you speak to him on the phone? That day? Yeah. Uh, probably have a record on it. I'm thinking 9-ish. 9 p.m.? Yeah. About okay. 9 p.m. And I don't think I have your address. Do you have, like, an ID that I could write down? You know, I don't. I, okay. I I don't know why do you, we can get it after this. No, that's want. fine. How do can you just give me your your legal name and all that stuff? Yeah, David. Okay. All right. So, um, how does how is is Jeremy just another friend of yours, or who yeah. is who is he? Jeremy was also kind of all mutual friends from the dealership. Okay. It's a Ford dealership in Longmont Ford. Okay. Uh, Jeremy was a manager there, and um, I, don't know, I don't remember what his title was, internet manager, or whatever. But yeah. Um, so he, yeah, he would, <clears throat> excuse me, we're all kind of friends. Uh-huh. And so Jeremy, that's when he contacted me. Okay. So you reach out to, um, to Chris by text. Yeah. Don't hear anything back. And you, so you just had to call him around. Give him a call, yeah. Cause Jeremy in the interim was texting me, kind of giving me more information on what was mm-hmm. going on. So then of course I got concerned. I was like, oh wow, what's going on? I mean, mm-hmm. so that's, and I didn't hear from Chris. So I called him and then he did answer. Yeah. And so that's when I said, oh, I'll come by. And I, that night I went over to. Okay. Go see him. What time do you think you got there to the house? To the house? It's a guesstimate, honestly, I mean, but it's, I'd say, 9.30-ish. Yeah. Because I think he called around, I talked to him around, or I called him around 9, uh-huh. and by the time I got off the phone with him, we walked over. It's uh-huh. a guesstimate, but say 9.30. Sure. So you get there, and who else is there at that time? Nobody's there, just Chris. Mm-hmm. Um, he was uh, keeping himself busy by, you know, doing, like, housework and stuff, because he said his mind, which, you know, totally understood that. Yeah. Um, and then... About 30 minutes later, whatever it was, Jeremy showed up. Okay. And Jeremy um, just, I guess in a sense, just trying to be there for a friend or consoling. I'm not really sure what word to use. Yeah. You know, it was just kind of like, honestly, you're talking about it, it's like a loss of words. You don't know, you know yeah. really what to say. It's, I've never been around that, so. What was <clears throat> Jeremy's last name? I don't think. Uh, Lindstrom, like L-I-N-D. Uh-huh. S T R O M, I think, is how okay. it's pronounced or spelled. All right, and he's a manager at Longmont Ford. Now. He was at Longmont Ford. He's now at um, a different dealership. He's at a uh, in Broomfield at Silter Har. Okay. So he does he live in the neighborhood as well then? Or? He lives in Erie. He's probably five ten minutes away. Okay. Um, he's not in our neighborhood, but he lives like you got fifty two Highway fifty two. He's yeah. on like you know the. Um, so Other side, side by twenty five. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And the new building and new houses in there. Okay. So how long do you stay at the house then? Oh at Chris's house? Yeah. I'm guessing an hour. Yeah. You know, somewhere in there just talking to him and he said he was um wasn't really tired, but he said he just wanted to lay down and mm-hmm. um try to get some rest or something like yeah. this. Something like what that. do you recall that he was saying about the situation as you kind of reflect back on it? Um that I asked him, okay, I mean, I asked him what was going on. I was like, dude, you know, and he's like, well, he said he didn't know, but he said that they were struggling in their marriage, I guess. Mm -hmm. He said she went to North Carolina for like five weeks. Mm -hmm. They did like, I don't know if you want to call it a trial separation or whatever. Yeah. Oops, I'm sorry. Look at my radio. Turn it off. Um, Some kind of trial separation for five weeks or something. Uh Um, She got back. I guess they kind of talked and try to work things out. I don't know the inner workings of why they're fighting. I, I don't... You, don't know what the, you didn't know what the difficulties in the marriage were? No, I have no idea. I don't ever... Everybody's got their own thing. I don't yeah. get involved in his. Um, and then he said that they did have a disagreement or an argument that morning. Mm-hmm. And then, obviously, that's when something... Yeah. Did he up. say what that disagreement that morning was or anything like no, that? No, he didn't like, give me any details on what... Just that they're not getting along or something. Just you know, just mm-hmm. typical. I, I just how I took it as typical. Yeah. You know, people how they are. Anything about the kids that you bring up or mention that you remember? Um, no, nothing other than he was worried about like I think one of them has to take meds, uh-huh. and the, there was no meds taken, uh-huh. like from the house that right. he knew of. So mm-hmm. that's the only thing he's worried about with the kids, mm-hmm. other than being gone. What did he think had happened at that point? You know, he was, his speculation was that she left with somebody, doesn't know who, because I, I did ask that question, I said, well, who would she leave with? I mean, is she seeing somebody? Is, I mean, what's going on, dude? And he's like, 
he goes, he goes, dude, I don't know if she's seeing somebody or what. I mean, yeah. you know, I don't know what all the truth is here, but all I know is his, his speculation was that she left with somebody uh-huh. and she's hiding out somewhere. Okay. Not, I don't think abducted. With, with the kids or without the kids? With the kids, mm-hmm. yes. Yeah, with the kids. So left voluntarily with the kids. Left voluntarily with the kids with, and I, and I asked him, I said, do you have exterior cameras? Uh-huh. Yeah, does neighbors have exterior cameras? And someone they didn't just vanish. So someone pulled up, or somehow yeah. I don't know if they went out the back, or what. But um, that was my question to him because mm-hmm. he does, he didn't have exterior cameras, and he didn't know if his neighbors did. Mm-hmm. So what, how would you describe his mind frame at that time? Was he thinking it was going to be resolved? Was he upset? Was he? Yeah, I think he was thinking it was going to be resolved, and I think he was thinking that, you know, if I had to guess, he he never he never said this, but. That, you know, obviously he just wants his kids back Mm -hmm. is the way I was taking it. I mean, he was concerned for anybody's, you know, well-being for sure, but he was just worried about his kids and getting them back and, and, you know, I guess where they're at. Yeah. His biggest thing was where where are they at? Yeah. So, I mean, are they hanging out in the neighborhood? Are they getting someone's car and drive out of state? Yeah. According to him, he had, like, no information at all. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's... Like, y'all are involved. Yeah. <laughs> what, what was your perception? Did he, uh, whether he was surprised that something like this had happened? Was it a shock to him? I mean, what, what do you remember about his emotions? He was pretty blank. Yeah. I mean, to be honest with you, he was not like, like, oh, I knew this was coming. Yeah. Or anything like that. He just, he just, he was blank about the whole situation about like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know why she did this. Uh-huh. You know, and... So, yeah, I mean, that, that's it. And, uh-huh. and, and, you know, he's just kind of, like, blank about it. Like, Yeah. yeah Did he bring explains. up, um, like, foul play or the possibility that something, um, you know, dangerous I think or he, violent had happened? You know, I think it was discussed. I don't think he brought it up. Uh-huh. I think it's just, a, I don't know if it's, like, typical conversation when something yeah. like this happens. But, you know, when Jeremy was there and we're talking, you know, we're kind of talking about this is, like, you know, what are the, the odds of someone being abducted in the neighborhood? Yeah. You know that kind of thing, and that's kind of where I said with exterior cameras, yeah. not just maybe someone pulling up like that, or maybe. So he didn't. He never really brought foul play up. Yeah, we. It, but it was, I think, discussed through mm-hmm. kind of, if you want to say, process of elimination, yeah. trying to figure things out. Yeah, and you had mentioned he was doing some housework. Do you remember what that type of stuff was, or he was? Oh yeah. yeah. Um, I don't. Well, it looked like the carpet was freshly vacuumed, uh-huh. and that's the only thing. I, I guess the house they usually keep a pretty neat, tidy house, so I yeah. can't really say everything was put away nice because they usually do. Um, but it looked like the carpet had been freshly vacuumed. I mm-hmm. mean, it was. It had the, the lines from the vacuum. Yeah. Any like cleaning supplies out or things of that nature? Mm-hmm. Nope. The only thing I saw him doing, he was making a protein shake. Yeah. And just talking and then he got a phone call I think it was his mom uh-huh. called him and uh and then that's when my friend jeremy called me and he said you know he didn't know exactly where the house was i said i'll step outside yeah. i stepped outside jeremy showed up and then we all went back in and then we talked to chris some more okay anybody else there present other than oh. other than the three of you guys not that not i'm aware of that was it just okay. you know we were just we just were we kind of gathered in the kitchen if you want to you want to say, and then kind of outside on the on the driveway. Okay, and um, he basically said he needed to lay down. At that point, you guys left yeah. in the evening. Yeah, he said. I, I'm not sure. It wasn't like he said he was going to bed. He just is just gonna, you know, lay down and I don't know if he's rest his mind. I don't know. Yeah, it's just kind of. Yeah. So, I mean, I've been in contact with him ever since. Mm-hmm. Um, my wife made some dinner for him last night. You know, if you want, yeah. and he says, well, you know, he was with. I guess y'all. He said he's with the FBI or something. I was like. Well, so he was done with you guys about midnight or something like that. I was like, wow. I said, okay. I said, well, I said, if you want, it's still there. You can have yeah. it tonight. And, um, so I just kind of been in constant contact because I figured he'd get some. I said, you know, I said, I know I'm not top on your priority list. I know parents and grandparents and yeah. now obviously, you know, officials need to be. But I said, I would like to be informed if you can, if you mm-hmm. do get the opportunity. So that's yeah. been our conversation. Back what then. has he been telling you about what's been going on? Any, any specifics or details or anything like that? No, just that he, um, yeah, well, I guess some specifics. He, I guess he talked to the news, uh-huh. um, and I, then I actually saw this morning on the internet, I'm not sure what channel it was, but they did like a, um, a an interview with him. Mm-hmm. Um, 
let's see, then he, obviously the Frederick police. Yeah. And then last night, that's when he said that he was with the FBI. Right. And I was like, oh, okay, wow, well, you know, I'll let you go. Just let me know what's going on. And so that that's about it. So has he kind of, <clears throat> uh, has that theory changed or is his, it, has he basically still thought that she's voluntarily gone and with somebody or has that changed to your knowledge? To my knowledge, I don't know because I, I, I've only seen him, what was it? What the hell is today? Wednesday, yeah. uh, Monday night. Uh -huh. I didn't see him last night because he was he was gone, and then right. I was going to see him tonight just to see what his. I, I, so I don't know. I haven't okay. asked him that question. I just okay. I just just give me information if you hear anything. Yeah. So I was going to actually talk to him about that tonight when I saw him. Mm -hmm. Just say, hey, you know, what are your thoughts still, dude? And, yeah. What yeah. do you think is going on? That's yeah. Sort of yeah. Okay. Any any I guess facts that he's told you about. You know, information that he's uncovered or he's discovered anything about their disappearance or anything like that at this point? No, n no, it's like I said, I haven't really. It's been pretty quick text messages, yeah. and a couple quick phone calls. Um, nothing really, other than, I mean, it's just kind of, I guess, just honestly, from my side, it's just baffling. Just, mm -hmm. I'm just trying to like, you know, try to understand this, and I'm, and I'm, I'm just hoping that. You know, she disappeared. She's hiding out somewhere. And, right. But by now, I mean, she has to know. I mean, it's plastered everywhere. Right. And according to him, he did talk to her mom. I guess her and her mom are super close. And uh, I guess her mom knows nothing as well. So mm -hmm. that's what scares me is like, I mean, someone's going to... I'm not... You guys, I don't deal with this every day. But I'm just saying, if I, if I wanted to disappear... I'd still want to be in contact with somebody. I don't think not everybody has this CIA mentality where yeah. they can just disappear and never talk to nobody again. Yeah. And especially her. She's a very family orientated lady. Mm -hmm. She loves her kids and all kinds of stuff. So she's not going to just vanish. That's just my mm -hmm. perception of Shanann. Mm -hmm. So So that's actually my next question. You know, oh. can you kind of describe her as a person and you know what you know about her, what she's uh, Yeah, she is I I could say she's a little overbearing to be truly honest with you. That's yeah. my uh, my take of Shanann, but she's all in all she's a good person. I know she's a good mom. She she probably is like overbearing with her kids and mm -hmm. just too much stuff, but whatever. That's it's her kids and do whatever yeah. she wants. Um but no she's yeah, I mean, generally, she's a nice person. She's a good person. I've always got along with her. She's always treated me very pleasant. Yeah. And so forth and so on. So, yeah. And within the marriage, mm -hmm. she's and mentioned you don't know the specific struggles they've been having lately, but in the past, have, has there been marital issues that you've been aware of? As far as I know, no. As the joke goes, they're I always laugh with, with the Facebook. You know, if everybody's lives were as great yeah. on Facebook as they actually were. Um, I actually took her off Facebook because she posted every three minutes. Yeah. So, I mean, it's pretty, you, can, I can, you can confirm you know, that with probably that. anybody, but yeah. it's like, oh, my God, okay, Celeste is doing okay. I mean, it was just kind yeah. of crazy. So, um, yeah, as far as that, I, I, I just thought they were as, as happy as a tick on a dog's back, as we say mm -hmm. down south. Yeah. So it just, I don't, I was really honestly surprised. Mm -hmm. I always thought they, because their personalities, Chris is very um, uh, non-combative. He's 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 you know, what's, what's the right way of putting like it? Non-confrontational. Yeah, non-confrontational. He's uh, like perfect for her because she's she seems to like run things. Uh huh. I mean, she's like organizes this, gets this. We're going here, and you know, if they're going on vacation, she buys a ticket, she does all that. Mm -hmm. Chris kind of goes along with the flow, you know. So, and his personality is like I said, very. Just hanging out, you know, I'll mm -hmm. just go with the flow kind of guy. Mm -hmm. So they seem like, I mean, to me, like, really good. So, mm -hmm. you know, they're not like A personalities clashing. Right. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I, honestly, thoroughly surprised. Mm -hmm. Thoroughly. Because I really thought they were cool. Yeah. I mean, they little two little girls, and I guess she's got another baby on the way. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they were born a girl, but it's a, I don't know how far, I couldn't remember how far along she was, but. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in terms of financial problems, have you ever heard about financial problems or issues that they've been having? No. Um, I think they're to themselves with stuff like that. I think he does pretty good with Anadarko and I don't, all I know is that she does some kind of thrive. Yeah. Something uh, like supplements or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know if she has any other for, source of income or not, but mm -hmm. um, they seem like, I mean, they seem like they are okay, I, I, but I don't know, honestly. Okay. What they're but nothing that's, you know, been made aware to you or No, you know, no, no, no. And I think they're pretty much to themselves. Kind of, they, like, talk to fa our family and stuff, not friends about their financial situation. Yeah. But, no, they've never disclosed any of that to me. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, what is your sense of what, what's happened, just based on everything you know about the situation? 
I, my sense, and, it, and it's kind of a hope as well as, I guess as a gut feeling, is that she's she picked up and vanished on her own. And I, I hate speculating because... Yeah. Well, I asked you to, so... Yeah, okay, well, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> so, um, that's my... That's my thoughts on it. Just you know, it's yeah. just whether your hope or your speculation. Well, it's both. I'm speculating and I'm hoping that she's hiding out and everybody's okay. It's just, and you now maybe she's in this position. She's seeing all this going on and maybe she's scared out of her mind now. Going, oh shit, what did I do? Yeah. And now I'm going to be in a lot of trouble with the law. I, I don't know. I don't know laws to mm -hmm. say if she is or isn't, but. Um, that's my hope and speculation. Yes, that's, that's what she's. And I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm hoping like hell nobody was abducted right. and taken, and that's horrible. Yeah. You know, I got kids, so it's gonna like. Ew. Yeah. In terms of um, infidelity, have you ever been made aware, or even just thought that either one of, uh, either party was being unfaithful, and the other or had some going on the side? No, not at all. I mean, if if there ever was, I would I would throw it on Shanann, not Chris. Not just because he's... They're both friends. I, I'd say Chris is more my buddy than Shanann. Yeah. But Chris, I would say if, if there ever was, it'd be Shanann. But as far as do I know, no. Okay. None. All right. Not that I've been aware of or made... Given any information. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> you mentioned that she's expecting. Do you know anything about that? Did Chris tell you about it or... No. <laughs> now I found out was... Uh, um, my wife is still friends with her on Facebook, if you want to say. Um, and she said, did you, you know, did you know, after the phone call came through, she goes, did you know Shanann was expecting And I was like, no idea. I, hadn't, I haven't talked to Chris for like, it's been a few months. Mm -hmm. Just busy, you know, life is, you know, the yeah. way life is, you know, just, it's not, I mean, hell, we're right around the corner. And it's like, my oldest son lives in Loveland. I see him twice a year, mm -hmm. you know, so it's, it's just life. It's just tough, but, um... He, uh, I did not know she was pregnant. Did he mention it on Monday when you were over there? Um, I can't remember if he said it. We talked about it, but I can't remember if he said it or I asked. Honestly, I don't remember if he said that she's, she's pregnant. I, I don't know. I don't know. It, we talked about it, but I don't remember who said what. So there wasn't a reaction that you recall? No. About that? No, no. So, and you've mentioned um, Shanann being on Facebook quite a bit. Has Chris ever been on Facebook? Chris at one time was, and it was it was kind of funny because I asked him because he was doing things that were, I hate to say it sounds sexist, but not guyish. <laughs> okay, so like, and I was like, I'd look at it, I was like, did he really write all that shit? That's weird. So well, I well, asked him. Well, things like, you know, oh my God, I have the most wonderful wife in the world. I can't, she made dinner. She does this. I don't know how she keeps up with all this kind of stuff. And I'm not saying a guy can't give his, his, his wife props, but there's just the way it was worded. It sounded not, one, well, I know Chris, uh -huh. and it didn't, and it sounded more like, huh. So I asked him, I said, dude, what the heck? He goes, dude, I don't put that stuff on her. So she kind of ran his Facebook and huh. she, she was putting that stuff on her. So, so is he no longer on he, Facebook? Yeah, he said, he, uh, he said he's not on her. Because I went to look it up after I heard. I went to look up his name and I couldn't find him anywhere. I went, oh, so hmm. yeah, he's not there no more. Did you ever ask him why he's not on it? Or? No, I just, no, I never did. I've, I've kind of a couple times gone and gone. I had it, I set it up a long time ago, mine for my business. Because and, and, it works pretty good. People are like, oh, I didn't know you do that. They bring your work. I've kind of kept it. I've closed it down a few times, brought it back up because I like funny stuff. Sometimes there's some funny things. I li I'm a FSU guy, grad, so I like to keep up with my Seminoles, and so yeah. it's easier to do it through these little things that they have on there. So um, anyway, yeah, I don't know why he did, though. Okay. Yeah, no idea. Um, you said that you hadn't talked to Chris in a few months mm -hmm. just because of life, busyness. Right. It, when's the last time you saw Chris before Monday? Last time I seen him was probably, it's been a while, I'd say four months ago, um, probably, if I'm thinking right, at the mailbox cluster. I think I ran into him and we kind of talked for a little bit just to catch up. He's asking about, because I started here like a year and a half ago, yeah. um, and he's asking about, you know, just jobs and, you know, how we're doing and everything. Just basic shit and the same thing. It's like how the kids, how's, you yeah. know, how Shanann, that kind of shit. So. What about um, Shanann? When did you last talk to her? It's been a long time since I talked to Shanann. Um, I'd say at least a year. Huh. I'd say at least a year. Yeah, she's. What about seeing her? Um, I think I've I think I've seen her in the neighborhood. If I remember right, they were walking once, 
I think they had like a, they had the babies with them. I call them babies, but they had the kids with them, and they were walking, and they mm -hmm. they happened to come by our. I was out doing yard work or something, and mm -hmm. just chatted with them for a little bit. And you, when you were talking um, about this trial separation, is that a term that you just came up with, or something that Chris said? It was he's. I don't know if he said trial separation. He said it, they were separated as, and they were doing it. I don't know if it was like I don't know if he said trial or he said just see how they would be apart. I, I mean, that may have been my terms. I've just heard that I've heard that term before yeah. somewhere. So that may have been my terms. And um, you live in, in the same neighbor, neighborhood. Mm -hmm. had, had they mentioned anything about their house moving, selling, anything like that? No, 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 not nothing. No signs. No nothing about moving. Nothing like that. No, no. I mean, we've we've kind of. It's kind of funny. I'm. I just bought some land down in Florida, and last time I talked to Shanann, she was like, "Oh my God, you did!" And I said, "Yeah." And she goes, "I've moved back to Florida. You know, that's the only place back east. They don't want to go back to North Carolina for whatever. You know, whatever. I I like Florida." you know, whatever people have their thing, but I bought some land down there, and so she said, yeah, if I ever move it, so that's the only thing about moving that was ever discussed, hmm. was that, but it's not like they were going to do it, she just was kind of like, really, where yep. did you buy it, and you know, that's been questioning, you know, where it is and all that stuff. And then, um, I think this is all I have, but you had mentioned that you met them, did they both work at Longmont Ford? Yes, he's a mechanic, or was a mechanic, and she was in sales. I can't remember who was there first. I don't think they came at the same time. If I, I, and it was Chris. Chris got um, headhunted as a, as a mechanic out there in North Carolina, and they brought him here hmm. to work at Ford. And then I think, if I remember, I don't know the time span, but somehow Shanann came in and started doing sales. And this is before they had any kids, too. So it was just the two of them. And uh, they... And then, the obvious, the, whatever the reasons, they, they both split. They didn't want to be there anymore. And mm -hmm. Chris got a better job at the Anadarko. And I, again, what she does, I don't know, other than that, thrive. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there anyone that you think <clears throat> that you should tell us that we need to go talk to about this? Um, let me think. The, we got oh, Jeremy on the list. You got Jeremy, okay. Jerry Lindstrom. Um, the only other people that maybe have or haven't, I don't know, I don't know their names and I'm sorry, but they were, uh, when we moved into our house before and Chris helped us move in, um, and then when their house was built, I returned the favor and they were living with some folks in Anthem. It's, I can't remember their names. I'll be honest with you. I cannot remember. And Chris would probably tell me who they, you know, I don't have my phone. I'm not have my phone on me, but, um, they lived in their basement. Mm -hmm. For quite a while, probably a year, I guess. And I, I think they were pretty attached to those guys, but I think they now live in Parker. I think they moved mm. from there, and they moved to Parker or something. Um, they may... They, I mean, they, they must have been pretty good friends to move in with them and live in their basement for a year. Yeah. Um, obviously, I'm sure you probably talked to whoever that Nicole... I don't even know who Nicole is. I've never met her. Um, other than that, no. That's, that's the only people I would know that would, would may, maybe know something. On the topic of Jeremy, would you <coughs> mind getting his phone number? Yeah, just I don't, in case. I'll have to walk you back or... or I, I, you, you can have, stay here if... Oh, no, I can... Is it the number you call me yourself? Yeah. I can text you Jeremy's okay, number. Okay, that would yeah, be good, so just you know. in case we need to contact him. For okay, reason. yeah, no problem. Yeah, it's not a problem. Cool. When I get back, I'll do it right away so I don't cool. forget. Appreciate it. Yeah. Anything else you can think of that might be important for us? Like I said, we're just trying to... You know, cross every base and talk to everybody that might have knowledge, and yeah. you know, that's what's led us here today. Well, I, yeah, and no, I, I don't really have anything else. If I do, I get your number, and I'll Perfect. be, and I get your card, and I'll be for sure to get a hold of you if I hear anything or see anything or what what have you. What was the what was the we I can't remember what was not the charge, but what was they said on the news? What they're saying it's we try to avoid the news. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sure I, I totally get that. But they had the it was not the charge, but what they were saying it was going like on. Like endangered missing In, person. That's what it was. Endangered yeah. missing person. I was like, mm. that doesn't mean no one. Yeah. What does that mean because uh, uh, children are missing? Yeah, children are missing. They need medication. That sort of thing. Oh, okay. So it qualifies for that. Okay. Any lead at all? Anything uh, going on? A lot of people we're talking to. Okay, uh, so. and, and I know you can't disclose it to me, but yeah. I'm just, just concerned. I mean, mainly for the little girls. I'll be honest with you. Yeah. I mean, uh, you they're, they're babies. Do you have any concerns that this could be involved? 
I really don't. I mean, uh, you're not the first person who's, who's said that because when you talk about this, well, that's where everybody goes. I mean, that's, yeah. you know, other people closest to home. Right, right. Um, as far as no, I, as far as I feel in my heart, I know Chris pretty well. Like you said, he's the lowest key guy I think I've ever met in my life. Go with the flow kind of guy, non-confrontational. But it's it's, you know, you see things almost daily now. There's all of a sudden people say that, and you're like, oh yeah, yeah. and you're like. Okay, so I mean, I, and I understand nothing can be ruled out, um, but as far as Chris, in my heart, no, I don't think he had anything to do with anything. Is if you, that's my cool. Right. Well, we appreciate your time, yeah. and like I said, if you wouldn't mind texting me that number, I'd really appreciate it. Yeah, you bet. Thanks for taking the time out of your day. Yeah, no, oh, no problem. Yeah, wish you, wish you provided the cool. You like working here? I love it. Yeah. Yeah, when you work for yourself or whatever, everything is you're chasing checks and whatever. yeah. Now I got all of a military retirement, I'll have this retirement and I'll go back to Florida and I'll be a beach bum. Where is your property at Florida? Uh you know Pensacola area? Uh-huh. Yeah. So a little out of a little east north of Pensacola. Uh -huh. A couple acres up there. It's like twenty minutes from the beach, but it's nice. in, it's away from everybody if I don't want to be in by anybody. It was just an orange beach. Oh where? Oh, yeah. Alabama? Uh-huh. Yeah, I love it there. It's pretty awesome. It's pretty. Yeah, the white sand For work, beach. So yeah, I didn't uh, really get to that. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, down there in the White Sand Beach is the water, tur turquoise water. It's just, yeah. and people are so friendly. Yeah. And, and it's sport cheap. fishing too. Down there. It's really, and it's cheap living. Yeah. There's no retirement tax, inheritance tax, state tax. Um, property taxes, there. property taxes, exactly. Property taxes is a little bit higher, but yeah. it's really all the other things wash it out and, and then some. So, well, yeah. enjoy. So I, I mean, it's a few you. years, but yeah, but I, I get the first step done with that. Right. Thanks, guys. Yep. Take care. Thank you. Hi guys, so I am so excited our Pure is coming today. I have four boxes, which I don't think they're going to last us very long because um, nope. these two are super excited to be trying it too for the first time. I'm going to have Chris open mine up because I'm holding the phone. So I'm super excited, really super excited to try it. My dad's so excited to try it. He's been waiting all weekend for it. All right, Chris, will you open the lid for me because I have one hand. Cherry limeade. Oh, that smells good too. That smells good. Who wants some? I have pure in your hands. Ready? Cheers, guys. Cheers. Boom. That's really good. That's, That's really good. good. Definitely. I like it. Everyone like pure? I like yeah. it. Pure for the win. Super excited. If you guys need your pure, haven't gotten it, reach out to me. Send me a message. My phone's dying, so just shoot me a message. If I don't respond quickly, just let me know. And uh, we'll get you guys your pure. Super excited. Bye, guys. Hi, is this David? It is. David, is it Colin? It's Colin. Okay. Uh, hey, this is uh, Detective Dave Baum over Frederick PD. How are you? Good. Good. Hey, I'm just doing some follow-up um, on the case. Um, I'm the lead detective on the uh, Watts case. Um, okay. And uh, I was just reviewing some reports um, in an interview you did with uh, some CBI agents that were helping you me out. Do you recall uh -huh. that? Oh, yeah, of course. Okay. Now, well, I'm, down, I'm down here with the Boulder County Sheriff's Department. Okay. Uh, what do you do there? I'm, I'm, a, uh, I'm in charge of maintenance for headquarters in the jail. Oh, okay. Um, do, am I, is this a bad time, or are we okay? Well, no, I'm, I'm, that's fine. Go ahead. Okay. Yep. Um, so the reason I'm calling is because uh, I, I was reading your report, and uh, coincidentally about the same time, um, I got a notification that, uh, of a letter. Um, do you recall sending a letter to Chris? Yeah, I do. I just sent the letter because I called up there because uh, Chris and I were really good friends. Um, and the night of uh, August 13th, um, I got a, we got a call from a mutual friend that uh, said, you know, said, hey, you didn't know what's going on with the, with, you know, Shenan and the girls. And I said, I have no idea, dude. So he goes, oh, it's all over Facebook. I said, well, I don't really do that. So. Anyway, long story short, so I call Chris on the phone, 
he answered, talked to him, and he goes, you know, the story that he had at that time was, um, you know, that, that she left and so forth and so on. And, right. and I said, well, you know, I live down the street from him. So I said, yeah, come by and see you. If you don't mind, you go, sure. So went to his house that Monday night, talked to him for a while, everything else. So the, the, the reason for me prompting the letter mainly was we we're really good friends. Um, kind of want to ask him how he can say anything or not, but when I talked to the Weld County Sheriff's Department, they said to be on the visitor list, I must write him a letter, and then he must accept um, me in order to be a visitor or decline whatever you know whatever he chooses. Right. So I wanted to go talk to him personally and say, you know, one, why didn't you reach out to me? I mean, I'd have helped you. And then two, I mean, why? I mean, I was standing in the house, so you know, my 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 daughter. Yeah, babysat those the babies. Yeah. Um, my son used to drive around on his bicycle and, and talk to Chris a lot. So there's just a lot of confusion on my side that maybe I thought maybe if I sat face to face with him, he would uh, give me maybe a straight answer. That's kind of I need to. We flew to North Carolina to the uh, to the funeral. Me and my wife did, mm -hmm. um, and we got some closure there. I just wanted to get some closure from him because I was just confused. Okay. Okay. So that was so that's the whole purpose of the. So is it a typed letter? It's yeah. It's, I typed it on a uh, word. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so so you're saying the 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 main reason you did that is just to just to, like you said get some closure and figure out what was going on and then maybe you can just put this behind you and, you, and you're hoping exactly yeah because it's been it's been weighing you. on us pretty good. I mean yeah for you know since it's happened uh, like you said we live right. I mean we helped each other move into the you know to to the neighborhood and. Um, they came from North Carolina, um, and I met Chris down at, I used to have my own business, and I met Chris down at a Ford dealership. We became pretty good friends, because I'm from the South as well, and okay. we just, be, you know, kind of hit it off real well, and we like to talk, and, you know, like I said, that night I went over to see him, and, you know, he was just like, oh, yeah, Shanann, <clears throat> excuse me, Shanann, uh, she split, you know, she took the babies, and, you know, I, I don't know where she's at, and, like, and I thought it was a little odd, but I also knew Shanann pretty well i know she was a very overbearing lady um so you know i was kind of i don't say i was on his side but i was kind of like yeah i can understand why you're upset dude and, and blah 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 and then i tried to keep in contact with him and then like you said the cbi called me and wanted to interview me down here so i was able to meet him at the jail talk to them gave him my spiel and they asked you know wh what was going on i just told him i said yeah i said you know i said uh shenan was a very overbearing person i mean she wore the pants in that family and because they were asking me about each person, about right. their relationship, their finance. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know much about their finances or really the inner workings of their own relationship. But I knew both of them, you know, and how they were. Chris was very quiet, um, just an easy, easy going guy. I mean, probably the easiest going. I never even seen him ever get mad. Not once. Yeah. I mean, the whole time I knew him. So I guess, again, back to what I'm saying without rambling on here is, uh, yeah, I, I did write that letter because Weld County Sheriff said in order to, you know, to talk to him, I, he has to accept me as a visitor. Sure. So uh, that's what I was hoping to go up there. And if, I was, if nothing happened, if he wouldn't see me or he wouldn't, you know, then nothing okay. happened. But I was hoping for a little bit of closure on that side, just kind of like, I don't know. It's one of those things, I don't know what was going to be said or how it was going to be said, but I was just sit down and ask him. You know, why couldn't you reach out? Why couldn't you talk to somebody? Why did you have to go through all these steps? And you know, maybe his lawyers aren't allowing that anyway. Maybe his lawyers are—I don't know. But yeah. that's what prompted me to write the letter. Yes. Okay. You know, I understand that's that's fine. Um, and obviously, you can do that. I'm not questioning. You know, why you wrote. I was just curious. Uh, but I do want to ask about a couple of things that sure. um, just a couple of inconsistencies of at least what the what I have in the report, the CBI report, and and what your letter um, says. And it just if you can kind of clear that up for me is all. Um, and it says in the, um, your letter is that the CBI came to your your job on end to interview, like you said, mm -hmm. and then and then you put um, uh, you told him how what of a great guy he was, um, right? And then um, but then you also made a statement. Well, like you said about uh, Shanann about be, being overbearing, and then there was something about that you, you also said that there's no way he had anything to do with their disappearance. Do you recall that? Yeah, I do, and that, and that's that's how in my heart I felt. Okay. I mean, I mean, he he had me convinced. First of all, I knew Chris, so I mean, yeah. the guy was a very mild mannered person. At least, you know, that's what I thought. I mean, I, nobody knows what's going on in, in someone's brain, but 
um, for I know him for I guess seven years or whatever it was. Um, when they interviewed me, I said, "No, there's no way." I mean, it's just not Chris. It's just, but obviously I was wrong. So I mean, that's okay. where that stands. Okay, so that was that was definitely your position at the time. Obviously, before you yeah. do anything, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, great. Um, then you said you guys are pretty good friends, but did you did you see each other very much at all? Or I mean, I, I know you're neighbors, but um, it was a yes and no. I mean, everybody's yeah. busy, and you know, I got kids yeah. and the family and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I mean, for um, we'd you know, we'd have like you know barbecues and house parties, and, and you know they'd come by for a little bit because they had the little ones to get them to bed early. But um, they uh, ended up here and there. But uh, there for we we've hadn't seen each other for probably. In a few months, I can't remember exactly. I mean, we've—I think we talked on the phone or chatted, or um, I bought some land down in Florida, and I think it was in June. Um, you know, they're like congratulating me on, you know, that because you know that's where I'm from. I'm moving back um, when I retire from here. But mm-hmm. uh, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it wasn't like a lot of contact, but it was a, you know, it, we lived in the same neighborhood, so I'd see him at the mailbox, you know, sure, mail, yeah. right, yeah, and just you know, BS with him there, right. It wasn't like he hung out on weekends and stuff like that. No, 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 not yeah. as much. Cause we're yeah. in different worlds because, you know, um, our kids are older and high school kids and kind of running around doing their thing, and they got little ones. So, you know, <clears throat> it was just kind of every once in a while, Ellie, who's, who's this my stepdaughter, she would babysit the little ones when they would need a hand with something and mm. that kind of stuff. But, yeah, sure. that's, that's okay. about the size of that. Okay. All right. All right. So sounds good. I think I understand uh, more of what your position is and um, and what the letter is about. So that makes more sense. I just wanted to clear up a couple of inconsistencies. At least, at least with the report that I have that from the CBI report, um, it didn't have anything in there specifically like that you just explained. So I just wanted to clear it up. So that was the whole purpose for my call. Oh no, sorry, no sorry, buddy. Okay, no oh, sorry. All right. Do you have any questions for me? For... Uh, the only thing I got, and I don't know if it's um, since you're obviously you've been informed of the letter is. Are there, uh, and maybe that's up there, I don't know, but are, am I allowed to visit, or is it, or did he accept that, or is it a no-no, or I don't know? Um, yeah, as far as I know, I mean, that's, um, I don't know all the policies and procedures for the Well County Jail as far as visitations, but I don't think he's restricted from visitors. So, um, okay. obviously, it's up to him whether or not he approves it. I, I think that's how that works. I mean, that would definitely be a, a better question for them. Um, okay, yeah, I'll give them a call up there. That's fine. I just thought okay. maybe they said something to you. Like, obviously, you got no. the letter, and, you know, they, they want to follow up with stuff. And I and I, and I kind of almost expected a call because, you know, I understand it's such a um, sensitive, you know, um, uh, event. Yeah. So, you know, I was kind of like, yeah, so I wonder if they would give me a shout, uh, questioning my letter or whatever. I didn't know the Frederick, you guys would. I didn't know if it was, like, Wald County or somebody. I didn't know. But, yeah. Um, Okay, well, I'll call the jail and uh, and see if he's been given the letter and if it's okay to, you know, pay a visit and maybe get some closure to this. If not, you know, whatever, but at least I know I tried. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, I agree with that. So, Okay. Well, great. Well, thank you for your time, sir. I appreciate it. No, same here. Thank you. Take care, buddy. All right. You too. Bye. Bye-bye.